In this lecture, we will review congenital heart disease, ventricular septal defect. Ventricular septal defects can be divided into perimembranous, muscular, inlet and outlet VSTs depending on the location. Of these, perimembranous VSTs are the commonest. VSDs can decrease in size and undergo spontaneous closure. Spontaneous closure is most likely to occur with small muscular VST and perimembranous VST, while inlet and outlet VSTs are least likely to close. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button, press the bell icon after that for all updates. Perimembranous VST is located near the left ventricular outflow tract and if large can involve muscular septum in addition to the membranous septum. It is a subbiotic VST located in the membranous interventricular septum. Echocardiogram showing ventricular septal defect in the parasternal view. It shows the subbiotic perimembranous ventricular septal aneurysm marked by the arrows. The color mosaic jet from the left ventricular outflow region into the right ventricle is seen in the right panel. There is a perimembranous aneurysm meaning the VST is on the closure path. The mechanisms of spontaneous closure include 1. Closure by aneurysm formation 2. Closure by prolapse of the aortic valve 3. Closure by attachment of septal tricuspid leaflet 4. Closure by indoth of tissue When prolapse of the aortic valve occurs, there is associated aortic regurgitation which can progress over the years. Similarly, when the closure is by attachment of the septal tricuspid leaflet, there can be tricuspid regurgitation. If there is a fenestration of the tricuspid leaflet, there is a left ventricle to right atrium shunt. The other cause of LVRA shunt is an atrioventricular septal defect or gerboid VST. Muscular VST can be anywhere along the muscular septum and can be multiple. Multiple muscular VSTs are known as Swiss cheese VST which are very difficult to close surgically. Small epical muscular VST has a soft epical systolic murmur of shorter duration unlike the loud pansystolic murmur in the parasternal region of other VSTs. This is because the defect is occluded by ventricular muscle contraction in the latter part of the systole. Inlet VST is part of the endocardial cushion defects and can be associated with ostium primum AST and AV wall regurgitation. The ventricular septal defect associated with Down syndrome is usually of this type. If both inlet VST and ostium primum AST are present, then it is called a complete AV canal defect. Another name for inlet VST is canal VST. A cleft in the mitral wall is the reason for associated mitral regurgitation. AV conduction abnormalities may also be associated. When there is a complete AV canal defect, a common AV valve can be present. Outlet VSTs are called subpulmonic VST and doubly committed VST as well as subarterial VST as they are in the right ventricular outflow tract in relation to both the great vessels. These VSTs are more common in the Far East and more likely to have associated aortic regurgitation. Chance for spontaneous closure is low in these. Hence, some advocate surgical closure even for small outlet VST to prevent future development of progressive AR. Clinical findings in VST depends on size and location of the defect. A small defect produces a loud murmur, malady the roger, often associated with a thrill in the parasternal region. Murmur is soft or even inaudible in a large VST. This is because the pressure in the two ventricles equalizes in a large VST. The murmur may disappear when severe pulmonary hypertension develops and the left to right shunt ceases and a right to left shunt ensues. This is known as Eisenmenger reaction. Severe pulmonary hypertension develops when there is a large left to right shunt from early infancy due to pulmonary vasoreactivity. In late stages, obliterative changes may occur in the pulmonary vasculature. When this occurs, it is irreversible even after surgical or device closure of the VST. When there is pulmonary hypertension, there is a loud pulmonary component of second heart sound which may be palpable and associated with dullness on percussion in the second left intercostal space.
Right ventricular hypertrophy in this situation is manifest as left parasternal heave. Cyanosis and clubbing may occur in Eisenmenger syndrome. Eisenmenger complex is the specific name for VST Eisenmenger. The VST murmur may be heard higher up in outlet VST and towards the apex in small apical muscular VST. In inlet VST, murmur of associated mitral regurgitation may be audible but may be difficult to differentiate from VST murmur. ECG is normal in a small ventricular septal defect. Large VST with large left to right shunt will have left ventricular volume overload with small Q waves, tall R waves and upright T waves in the lateral leads. Large VST progresses to biventricular overload when there is hyperdynamic pulmonary hypertension. ECG pattern of biventricular hypertrophy is called cat's wagtail phenomenon with tall biphasic QRS complexes of amplitude over 50 mm in mid precordial leads. This pattern is usually seen in children. Since the QRS amplitude is high, it often overshoots the margin of the ECG graph as seen in lead V4 in this case. It may be necessary to take ECG in half standardization to capture the full QRS complex without overlapping with other leads in simultaneous multi-channel recordings. Large anterior electrocardiographic forces are due to the hypertrophied RV and late posterior forces due to the hypertrophied LV. AV canal VST is associated with left axis deviation in the ECG. Complete heart block, both transient and permanent, can occur after surgical repair of VST as well as after device closure. This is because of the proximity of the defect to the conduction system. Chest X-ray is normal in a small VST. Large VST will have LV type of cardiomegaly and pulmonary congestion in infancy before the development of pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension manifests as prominent main pulmonary artery segment and prominent right descending pulmonary artery. Close scrutiny may show the dilated left pulmonary artery within the cardiac cellulose. When severe pulmonary hypertension occurs, cardiac size decreases due to decrease in the pulmonary blood flow, but pulmonary arteries may become more prominent. Initially, pulmonary vascular markings are prominent and seen up to the periphery of the lung fields with large VST. When vasoreactive pulmonary hypertension sets in, there is peripheral pruning with decrease in vascular markings in the periphery of the lungs. X-ray chest PA view of a child with VST, left right shunt and hyperdynamic pulmonary hypertension. There is cardiomegaly, prominent main pulmonary artery segment and right pulmonary artery. Enlarged left pulmonary artery shadow is seen below the left cardiac border within the cardiac silhouette. The enhanced vascular markings are visible on the right side whereas it is obscured by the cardiac shadow on the left side. This child ideally needs cardiac catheterization for evaluation of shunt, pulmonary vascular resistance and its reversibility to decide on surgical option. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.